Good news, InfoSec and Cyborg Hacks are here to help you pass the CISSP exam. This is part one of a two-part Cyberwork hack in which InfoSec's CISSP bootcamp instructor, Steve Spearman, gives you his top tips and tricks for taking the CISSP exam. In part one here, we'll be talking about what makes the CISSP such a difficult exam, common mistakes people make while taking the exam, and what to do if, heaven forbid, you don't pass on the first try. You don't need to do this alone, but you do need to listen to Steve's amazing suggestions in this, part one of this week's Cyberwork Hack. Hello, and welcome to a new episode of Cyberwork Hacks. The purpose of this spin-off of our popular Cyberwork podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you a quick, clear, and actionable solution or a new insight in how to use InfoSec products and training to achieve your work and career goals. So my guest today, Steve Spearman, is an InfoSec instructor, and among his very many areas of expertise, he is our boot camp instructor for one of the most requested and most desired certs in the industry. That's ISC2's Certified Information System Security Professional, or the CISSP certification, as we all know it. Uh, so for today's Cyberwork Hack, Steve has some tips and tricks to help, uh, help you pace yourself and strategize taking uh, your test day uh, with the CISSP. So thanks for joining me today, Steve. It's a pleasure, Chris. Uh, so, Steve, we know uh, that the CISSP, uh, you know, is uh, pretty officially known as one of the most challenging exams in cybersecurity and among even the most talented security professionals we know. Uh, I know more than a few of them have failed the exam once or more, and there's no shame in that. It's, this is a biggie. So to start off, I want to ask you what it is that makes the CISSP such a challenging exam to take and such a challenging certification to get. It is a very difficult exam. There's there is no question. I, when, in in class, I say this for many of you will be the most difficult exam you will ever take in your life. It's it's very difficult. The reason is kind of interesting. So it covers a lot of topics. There are hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of specific topics. There are some people that have indexed that, and I don't know the exact number, but I, maybe it's even thousands. It, it it is. It depends on how you define a topic, but it's like okay. it is. A it is as a lot of people say it's a mile wide and an inch deep. It doesn't mm -hmm. go deeply into any topics, but it covers a huge volume of topics. Yeah. So you have to be familiar with a lot of different, you know, a lot of content. That's and and one of the thing one of the most common questions I get asked during a boot camp is we'll be covering some you know topic in the uh, in the slide deck and they'll say Are, could this be on the exam? And my answer is. If it if you're looking at it on the screen, I don't say it this snarkily, but it's like if it, it could be on the exam, if it's on this in this PowerPoint deck, yeah. it's definitely in the, you know, everything's uh, in, in play. The, yeah. Uh, <laughs> in the common body of knowledge. And yes, it could be on the exam. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um, so, yeah. The, so. So it's just a lot of material. The other thing I would say is tricky. Um, it is it, it is a the questions are kind of tricky, like you have to really dig into kind of understanding what they're trying to get from you as the test taker with exams. And, um, you know, I think most certs are known to have what are called distractors. Uh, these are questions, these are answers to questions that look good, like, oh, wow, that, but they're actually not, they're, they're, they're wrong. And I think the CISSP is, is possibly the trickiest uh, you know, uh, yeah. the trickiest exam out there. I'm not, I don't mean that in a, any way to imply kind of any sort of ethical failure. It's oh, no. like, right. it's just the questions are are very particular and, and, and even occasionally peculiar. Um, so yeah, it's, it, and so you have to understand how to break down questions. It's one, it is the, the, one of the critical skills. Yeah, and in in their in their defense, I mean, this is the certification that basically says to the industry, like, I am I am at least somewhat knowledgeable in every conceivable thing that you could possibly need me for in the realm of cybersecurity, whether it's cryptography or physical uh, building security or anything. Right. So, uh, you know, you almost have to be kind of a very sort of like a like a Wikipedia of cybersecurity or a reference librarian of cybersecurity. Like if I can't, and, and you know, man, I, I've heard man. of it, I can get it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. If I don't have yeah, it in my brain, man. this the, I have all the prompts yeah. I need to sort yes. of get to all yes. the things. So, yes. yeah. um, so based on on feedback you've received from people who uh, have taken your your boot camps, what are some of the most common mistakes 
people make with the CISSP either leading up to the exam or on the day of the exam? Well, leading up to the exam, it's just not preparing, not not being prepared, uh, you know, not, you know, so so uh, that's, you know, hopefully if they're in my boot camp, that problem hopefully is going to go away, especially if they're taking my advice during the boot camp. But on the day of, I think, first of all, just not being rested is a common, you know, and it it yeah. makes a huge difference. This is a taxing test uh, by about question 90. You are like, <laughs> you're so spent like yeah. you you know and um 90 you know, out of what 150 or something is it or so the so at the minimum it's um, right now uh until april 15th uh it's 125 minimum 175 maximum wow uh so yeah. and uh you know so it's like you know you have to really double down get rest you know you know be well rested um and and you know be hydrated all that sort of stuff like so that you can you know perform at your maximum um you know and also the day of just don't be stressed get there early all that sort of stuff so mm -hmm. um the thing is in actually taking the exam the i think the um the 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 number one piece of advice and possibly the, the number one failure that people uh will have is not taking their time uh, you have plenty of time. Oh, okay. uh, so if you if you have if you if you if you finish at 125 questions, which is sort of like acing the exam, um, it, you know, you've got uh, on one minute and 15 seconds per question. And if you go all the way to 175 uh, questions uh, and then you've got about 85 seconds per question, you have time and people like me, I'm actually quite an impatient test taker. And, you know, take your time. You have time. Uh, I have uh, been doing this. I've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students. I guess it's probably uh, well over a thousand students now in, go through my CISSP boot camp. And uh, I've never had a student run out of time that, that, that has told me they ran out of time. Right. Uh, I've, I, you know, you, you, you have to get to 125, but if you get to 125, you're going to have a, a scored exam. And, um, and, and, you know, it's never happened. Um, it's so you've got time. That's really my main kind of point of emphasis is take your time. Yeah. Um, if you it, being, being rushed or in a hurry or impatient, it's going to hurt you. Yeah, it's a marathon, so, not a sprint. You really have to you 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 got to yes, resist that temptation yeah. to go blasting out of the the front gate and and say, oh, I'm yes. doing great or whatever, because then you're just going to burn it's yourself a, out. Yes, it's a marathon, exactly. Absolutely. So, um, can you uh, walk us through some of your personal tips and tricks for taking the CISSP? I know that uh, you mentioned some mnemonics before and things like that, but what are some things they should be watching out for on the exam? Or uh, if you can give any advice regarding pacing or prioritizing certain problems when taking the test, that would be great. Yeah. So remember, with this exam, you cannot review and answer questions later. In fact, as a, ca a computer adaptive test, how you answer the question, this you know question is going to determine what question you get next. Nobody oh. takes the same exam. Interesting. That used to be true for the linear exam, but not for the computer adaptive test. Um, and, you know, so again, the most important advice I really do think is take your time. The second thing is that I'd say the second most important piece of advice is eliminating wrong answers first. Yep. So you're confronted with four questions, I mean four answers to a question and you and in 80% of them you can say well it's not A and it's not D. Uh it's like so learning to kind of um you know Learning to to um, you know and and you have to. I know for me personally, taking this exam and uh, and other certifications, you have to make your brain do it. You know, it's like well, I don't know what it is about the brain, but we like to see this block of four answers and we like to process them together. And what we're saying is like eliminate any wrong answers first. Mm -hmm. So when I when I'm teaching a boot camp, I say. I'm training your brain this week and what I and 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 what I'm training your brain to do. I can't give you all the content. Even even with a week of of a thousand slide deck PowerPoint and all, I can't give you all the content. You're going to have to dig into that even more beyond boot camp. But what I can teach you is how to take the exam. 
Yes. And, uh, and, 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 and where we're going to be practicing these principles. So I tell people, even if it seems kind of easy, just get in the habit of eliminating wrong answers first. So that's, so take your time, eliminate wrong answers first. Then there's some just general um, kind of things I like to let people be aware of um, taking this. One is that I, I have this joke. I tell people, you are going to think you're failing the exam. 90% of the people are thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm failing this exam. It's mm -hmm. just, this is an exam more so than I think other certification. It gets in your head. Yeah. So I tell people during my boot camp, I say, you guys, you're going to be in question 60, 80, 90. And you're thinking, I'm failing this exam. And here's what I want you to do. Just remember this face. I want you to remember this face right here. Okay. And see how I'm smiling. See how I'm smiling. The point is you're not failing the exam. The exam is getting into your head. Don't let it get into your head. That's it's you're doing fine. Almost everybody that goes through this boot camp passes the exam. Don't let it get into your head. You know, it's like uh, Steve Allen, another instructor says, it's not a, it does not give you warm and fuzzies. <laughs> like, that's just the way this exam is. Right. So just remember, you're going to say, I'm failing. And then you're saying, oh, wait, Steve said I would say that. No, I'm not failing. I'm doing fine. And then just keep yeah. plugging away and doing your best. So, yeah. Yeah. Again, going back to marathon things, they say that, you know, so much of it is is in is the mental game. Like you, 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 you don't yeah. believe you can do it. And then and but your body still could do it. It just you 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 shut your brain down before you shut your legs down. So um, yeah. I think yeah. that's that's really good advice. So um, I want to. Uh, talk, you know, to the, uh, you know, 9% or whatever, uh, who, who would rather not think about these things right now. But what is your advice if you finish the exam and find out you didn't pass? Like, what do you do? What's your next step to pick yourself back up and start climbing the mountain a second time? So the thing is, is like, um, it does happen. It's, it's not common, fortunately, for, for me as instructor and for InfoSec mm -hmm. as a, as a company. Um, it's, it, but it does happen. So the, I mean, I, and I, I've had people, you know, I'm, the good news with what I do is the vast majority of messages I get from clients, from, from students are, yeah, yeah I passed the exam. And so that makes my job really satisfying, but occasionally right. it happens. I even say this during the boot camp. I said, your value as a professional, as a person is not tied to how you do in this exam. It's like, and just remind yourself of that, right? It's like, you know, you, you have, you are, you're, you know, you're a capable person. There may be a lot of reasons, you know, some of which might be out of your control. Why you just, you just got to let it go. And I actually think it's important for even first time test takers to kind of have a little bit of mentality is like, I've done my preparation. I'm doing the best. I'm going to do the best I can. And that's all you can do. Right. So then I tell people is like, if you, if it's an important goal for you to pass this exam, Go ahead and schedule it 30 to 40 days out from now. Uh, take the results from your, you know, sorry you didn't pass sheet that you got at by it's given to the proctor at Pearson View. Uh, focus on the the domains you're weakest at. And then, you know, and I and again, I have a I have a way that I have a recommendation uh that I call the readiness assessment that I use to help people know. And it's like, you know, really gauge yourself. From that, that that readiness is assessment, which is, uh, I want students to get seventy five percent or higher on ISC two slash Wiley questions. So these are the questions in the official practice test, I mean, in the official study guide, in the official practice test, seventy five percent or higher, and it needs to be questions you've never seen before. So you need access to a fresh bank of questions. If you see. If you if you miss a question today and you ask the same, you're going to get it tomorrow. It's yeah. not a good assessment, in other words. And then use that to guide your, you know, your readiness. You know, go ahead and schedule your exam. Don't you don't want to pass it a second time. You don't want to fail it a second time. You can't take it for 90 days if you do that and then use that to kind of guide your preparation. And and then, you know, just believe you're going to do you know, you're going to do better next time. And that, you know, I've had many people come through my boot camp that for sitting in my boot camp, they had failed it before, in some cases, more than once who went on to pass it as a result. And I think it's taking the combination of advice and other things uh, that really make a difference. So. All right. Well, so for those who did pass their exams, congratulations. We're, uh, we're, we're imagining uh, the, the, the best possible scenario right now. Do you have any advice for sort of keeping 
what you've learned fresh in your head and applicable for your job. I'm not talking necessarily like CPEs, but just ways to apply your newly learned skills on, on your job. I mean, the thing is, I think people want to take they're, they're for you know for everybody, even for those that have you know twenty years experience in information security. There's always new things, ideas uh, that you know you you can take away. So I, I would consider it, use it as an opportunity to understand, uh, like you know, what direction I want to take my career. I've been exposed to some new ideas. Maybe I want to you know focus on something different, uh, and you know, and then of course you know just I think that you know subscribing to into uh, different uh, information security newsletters. I'm a big fan of Krebs on security. Is one mm-hmm. he's a long form journalist yeah. in information security. Uh, Brian Krebs is amazing. And yeah, different pleasure. resources like that. Uh, the CISA subscribe to CISA's uh, alerts. You know different things like that that can help you sort of stay fresh. And then of course the CPEs are important. Uh, you need it to maintain your credentials anyway. So. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that that uh, I asked this in another hex episode, but I'm going to wrap up by asking it again here. What's your best piece of advice for exam day? For, for exam day is uh, you know be rested, you know be mm-hmm. rested. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And I, you mentioned before you you get a, a whiteboard, right? You're able to like yeah, you have a you're given a whiteboard. Out. You can write. You can take any mnemonics you know that you've memorized put them on there get it out of your brain and you know yes. so it, it, it helps reduce stress and things like that so love that all right well uh, steve spearman thank you for taking a bit of worry out of the processing of the cissp i appreciate it yeah it's my pleasure thank you uh and to all of you thank you for watching this episode if you enjoyed this video and felt it helped you i hope you'll please share it with colleagues forums or other people on your social media accounts and definitely subscribe to our podcast feed and YouTube page. You can just type in Cyberwork InfoSec on YouTube or just type it into your podcast catcher of choice. Uh, I guarantee we'll be there. So there's plenty more to come. And if you have any other topics you want us to cover, uh, just drop them in the comments below. We do read them and we do appreciate them. So until next time, have a great day and happy learning. Hey, if you're worried about choosing the right cybersecurity career, click here to see the 12 most in-demand cybersecurity roles. I ask experts working in the field how to get hired and how to do the work of these security roles so you can choose your study with confidence. I'll see you there.